we are going to work on our router guard um, but just quickly one more time I want to recap so in my Firebase I have this collection online store inside that I have a document which is one store and inside that I have another collection called admins and inside that admins I have made one admin manually and as you can see right now I'm intentionally putting it is admin equals to false so now let's go work on our admin services okay so first of all the auth guard dot service so first uh, let's go to the, our app routing dot module so as you can see uh, there are pages like about us admin product settings um, I'm not going to secure about us but I want to secure my admin route products route and setting routes that means users should see only these pages only when he is logged in so first of all let's quickly import those two auth guard service so remember we created two different services auth guard and auth guard admin okay and then let's just use those uh, in can activate so all I'm going to do in admin I'm saying can activate and I'm going to import that actually it takes an array so what I can do I can do auth guard and auth guard admin service both um, but I think one, one is enough here I'm just going to copy paste this but product is an auth guard settings again auth guard uh, I think that's pretty much it okay so my app my routing uh, looks good I'm going to save this file Let's go back to our services here. Okay. Now, at the same time, I want to go to um, GitHub Angular Fire 2 implementation just for the reference. Okay. Well, let me just you know instead of waiting let's go um, so so now in, um, in auth guard service first thing I'm going to import is a uh, can activate and router so can activate is what we use in app routing so and the router is like you know uh, I've, I'm going to use to route you to a different URL so that's why I added these two in okay now I'm going to add Kappa angular fire auth module here okay one more thing I'm going to I need I think uh, rx uh, js sorry firebase app and then I'm going to import uh, observable RxJS. Uh, please pay attention to this one. In initial version Angular Fire 2, we used to import it from RxJS observable. Um, but right now, this is path is a little bit changed. So just to make sure that you are using, you are importing it from RxJS uh, Rx. Okay. And I think I will need a couple of more RxJS operator. Take and map. You will see how I'm going to use that. Next thing is. Um, I'm going to implement implement the um, auth guard implementation can activate okay now so as per as as you see like you know it's giving me an error because you know I have to I haven't defined the can activate yet so let's go quickly define can activate can activate is a as an observable of type boolean okay now inside that can activate um, but before I do that you know I see I have to declare the AF auth from angular fire auth I'm going to include it in my constructor so that I can use this in my can activate okay now I'm going to again um, add one more private router here okay declare it in my, in my constructor next thing is can activate is going to return an observable from and this dot af dot auth state so the, remember like you know that's why I wanted to go to the github repository and show you uh, if you go to that uh, authentication so as you can see this is uh, angular fire auth and you know the, uh, so af auth state this tells you if the user has been authenticated or not okay so that's why i include it like this so i'm going to create an observable from this okay and the next thing is let me call, um, let me call it take so it's going to you know input it's going to take only one um, first the observable and i'm going to map this map the state to um, and take the authenticator from the state okay and I'm going to say if is authenticated if not equals to authenticated um, then you know uh, route it to the login page perfect okay I think that that should do it yeah okay so now as you can see my auth guard is ready okay but this is a very simple basic auth guard now uh, if I go here and uh, go to my app and if I go to the product page and as you can see I already have a um, uh, router auth guard on product page 
if I'm not logged in, it's going to throw me back to the login page. Okay. Now let's go work on the admin page. Admin is a little bit tricky. Okay. The reason is, you know, so for example, let's go back quickly recap. So um, in in admin page, admin is only accessible if the user is an admin or not. So rest of the stuff like AuthGuard, it will be very similar to that AuthGuard admin. But you know, in AuthGuard, what we are doing, we are just checking if the user is signed in or not. Okay. If the user is signed in, that doesn't mean he is an admin. So admin is going to be very similar, but with a little different. Here in admin service, I want to check if the user is really an admin or not. And how you can check that? So if you go back to your Firebase, you you know that's how. So I'm going to check this property. I'm going to call this function call um, call uh, access this document online store elish admins and and I'm to, trying to first see if the document exists or not. And if the document exists, it has to be if the is admin property is false or true. Okay. So let's quickly do that. So let's go to authguard admin dot service. Same thing like authguard services. I'm going to import can activate and router. Next thing is I will need the same observable. Okay. This time I'm going to call it a, I'm going to include a backend service. Okay. So what this backend service is going to do is going to, um, I'm going to write a function later, which is going to check if the user is admin or not. Okay. I'm going to implement the can activate. Now it's giving me an error because can activate is not been defined yet. Okay. But before I do that, I'm going to quickly include the backend service to my constructor. Perfect. Now let's define can activate. Now can activate just like this auth guard is, is going to be an observable. Okay. It's going to be very similar. The only difference is instead of observable from this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to call my backend service and uh, write a function there. That's the only difference. Okay. So let's quickly finish this off. So can activate return this dot backend dot service and I'm going to declare a function called is admin. Uh, but for now, like you just pretend that is admin exists. Take one map, take the results. And if the results, um, if the results exist, that means those are not null, then return result dot is admin property. Otherwise return false. That's it. Okay. So no, I need do also. Okay. Do is admin. If the is admin is true, then you return true. Okay. Now that's it. Okay. Uh, let me include also a console log so that I just want to quickly see um, how the you know what is coming from the server. Okay. Now let me save this thing. Save. Now again, this function is not sorry. This function is not defined yet. Um, so let's go quickly define this is user admin. Okay. So I'm going to head out to my backend uh, service here. Okay. Here in the backend service, so first thing is um, right now there's only Angular Fire auth I have included, okay? But I have to include now here I want to query a collection or query a particular document inside the collection. So in case if you're wondering where do I get that information, just go back to the documentation, okay? And uh, as you can see, it's very simple. Just uh, import the Angular Fire store include in this in your constructor and then you can just say db.collection.value changes okay is as simple as that but i'm going to do a little bit extra so let's say querying a document okay you'll find all the documentation in this in their github repository okay so instead of this one i'm going to import angular fire store angular fire store document from angular fire and then i'm going to include um, so let's quickly just copy paste this thing here okay so import angular fire store angular fire store document Next thing is I'm going to include it, uh, this in my constructor so that I can access it inside the method. I'm going to say AFS is of type Angular Fire Store. Okay. Now I'm going to declare two different variables here. Pay attention to this one, please. There's one item doc and there's one item observable. Okay. So item is like a collection. Right now here is a type, a type item, but I'm going to say any. Any is fine. So item represent a collection here and item document represent one document inside that collection. Okay. So uh, let me include these two um, item doc and item um, observable. But instead of you know defining a data type, I'm just going to include any. Okay, next thing is um, let's go back here. I'm going to write a function here. It's called get doc. Okay. So again, where I got this function is um, is this one. Simple like this dot item dot equals to this. Okay. And as you can see here, all I need to do I need to part the um, pass the document ID and then you just subscribe. To, to that and the way you subscribe is just a um, call that value changes um, method on this uh, on your um, collection okay so this is pretty much it that's it so instead of um, 
hard coding the URL. All I'm doing here, I'm doing a call URL. Call URL is a filter. Okay, so I wrote a function called get doc, which is takes an um, argument of call URL. That means collection URL, and it is like it gives you the it returns back the item documentation. Perfect. Now I'm going to um, so if you remember, I'm going to use uh, write another function. Say is user logged in. Okay. So is user logged in is just tells you basically you know it's, it's simple copy paste from here. Okay. Copy paste this thing. It tells you if the user is authenticated, if the user is logged in or not. Okay. So let's go back to this one. I just copy paste this method. I declare a new method called is user logged in. And I copy paste this thing. Basically, if the user is logged in, it will return true. If not, it will return false. Next thing is now let's write the function called is user admin. Okay, is user admin. Um, now inside this is user admin, I'm going to say let collection URL. I'm going to declare a local variable called collection URL. And the, you will see the, the only reason I'm doing it, suppose the user is not logged in. If the user is not logged in, that means there is no authentication ID. So that's the only reason I'm doing. I'm saying collection URL, check if the user is logged in or not. If user is not logged in, if user is not logged in, then just say ABCD or any garbage. You know, I know that this document doesn't even exist. And else, get the document ID. Okay. And the why I'm doing this? Because I want to read this document. Online store, Elish admins, and this is the document ID. And this document ID, if you remember, this, this is exact, this matches the user authenticated id let me just quickly go back here let me show you if you go to your authentication tabs so remember that's how all the pieces um, you put together when you are logged in you are using your sign in method called google or yahoo or um, or say facebook and once you logged in you get a uid okay so if you remember this is the uid i'm using this is the uid okay and this is the reason why i uh, why I created that uh, document with this ID. Okay, so now you will see. So let's say collection URL equals to online store Elish admins, which matches to um, which matches to this path. Elish admins. See online store Elish admins, and now I want to see this document ID. So Elish admins, and then it takes the document. As simple as that okay so now I know this is the path to the exact document of my authentication okay now I can access this okay, in inside my um, inside my angular file okay now it's very simple just say this dot get doc and pass this call URL simple save this and I'm going to put a return uh, let me put a semicolon save that's it so now if you go back to my app Hopefully, right now I'm signed in. It's saying recompiling. Okay, I'm just going to wait one more minute. Let me also open this in Chrome because, as you have seen earlier, that Chrome has a better error handling. It shows you the better errors in case if there are any errors. Okay, so let's go back. Hopefully, all my routers will be uh, working now. Okay. Wait. Okay, everything compiles good. For some reason, this is very, very slow. Let's recompile. Okay, so as you saw, this user is logged in. Let me go try to access the admin path, okay? Uh, and remember, I'm not an admin. So once I click on this, you see it returned false. So if you remember, I intentionally put that console.log. Uh, console .log is admin. So it's telling me that, you know, this is false. So let's go quickly test that out. And you see that it didn't route me back. It didn't take me to that um, to the admin path, okay? So that means it's working. Now let's do one thing. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it a true update. Okay. Now let me try again. Okay. Now this time it should return true and it should take me to the admin. See, this works. So this shows me my admin routing is working. Now 
let me try one more thing i'm going to log off and uh, i think it's already working i don't need to you know prove anything here but let me quickly go to the fire you know to the chrome browser here let's see if this is working in this browser as well or not so it didn't take me there as you saw and it's giving me an error again it's giving is better errors that's why i like chrome about it but as you can see the error is not actually an error it's saying missing or insufficient permission that means you're trying to access a document which you do not have that uh, you do not you which you are not authorized to that's why it is giving me an error okay and the reason is because i'm not logged in here okay so again it's not a very good idea to show in, to have errors in your application catch those errors and like you know uh, and handle those properly but just for the developer this is a developer sessions so just because i wanted to show you how that what the actual errors look like that's why i included this one so hopefully as you can see all my um, uh, like you know, normal routes and authentication routes are working okay let me log out here okay now if i'm going to see the product okay see it didn't take me there so even the product you know it is it, not working because i'm not signed in 